Yo, it's crazy. You curse Joe Burrow, bro. I blame you, Bill. The worst I right. saw last year, I'll keep doing it. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Welcome, everybody, back to the Build Different Podcast. This is episode 15 of Gold Rush. I'm here with, as usual, with Bill. I'm your host, Thomas Axby, and Dom Boy is here in the NFL studio, ready to talk some football. So, what's up, Bill? How are you feeling? Feeling good, man. Feeling good. Happy to be back. Happy that we have the preseason officially underway. In my studio. The airwaves. Uh, Football's back, baby. Feeling good. I feel great. My uh, preseason's out tomorrow. My team plays tomorrow. Oh, who's your uh, team? Oh, yeah, I think I'm a Steelers fan. I'm a Steelers fan. Actually. Oh, yeah, woo. Yeah, I love the Steelers. Though, That's the Steelers. cool. Yeah. For our audio-only listeners, yeah. Dom's decked out in Cleveland Browns gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. decked out, decked out. But, yeah, to I'm those excited, of you but... out there in Belgium. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, I've done so many mock drafts. I've done so many rankings and stuff. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Hell, yeah. You guys watch that uh, show, new show on Netflix, The Quarterback? I'm like halfway yes. through. Halfway, it's I'm cool, right? It's great. It was, it's a cool. Yeah, I've watched the whole thing. It's a cool it's little amazing. show. Yeah, I, yeah. I like that. I, have, I'm, I think I got like two episodes left, but I gotta say I'm a lot bigger fan of Kirk Cousins, both Mahomes and Cousins. Yeah, not Mariota though. Not Mar- feel le- bad even for less. Mariota. Even less. You know, I don't. Well, bro, because episode one, I was like, why do they got him on the show? Like, he's yeah, just they had no idea, man. <laughs> when they There's like Marcus Mariota. Fuck it, why not? Yeah, Please. really group him in with Cousins and Mahomes. It's great, but for his show, I realize that. All the headlines coming out of who wants to be on it next year, nobody. nobody so yeah. that's why they had Mariota. They're Wait, about to have they, Mike they, White next year. They confirmed somebody though. I uh, haven't heard uh, anybody confirm. I believe yet. Josh Allen. Josh Allen okay. confirmed. I believe. I can see the, him. I think that was like, I think or no, Joe Joe Burrow as well is interested. Okay, but now he's injured, so I don't know. Hey, I mean, showing his recovery that might be. Fine. Yeah, even more. Yeah, that might even be fine. more interesting. So looking forward to quarterback season two, no matter who's on it. If I'm being honest. I'd even watch it if it was more Jared like, Goff got to be on it. Absolutely. Shout out to Jared Goff. Shout shout out. Out. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> 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 You're going to have to deal with that a lot, buddy. Right. Now I actually um, do root for Jared Goff. I but to, to break down uh, the episode, we're going to break down some headlines. We're also, last episode, we did the top five quarterbacks. We're going to do the top five wide receivers. We're going to do the top five running backs. We're going to talk about running backs in general because that's pretty crazy. Um, we're going to talk about quarterbacks with the most pressure, coaches with the most pressure, we're going to talk about sleeper playoff teams. Bill's block is back, but Dom actually gets to be a contributing factor because, you know me, I don't know shit about fantasy football. Um, and then we're going to make a team to, to close it off. So with that being said, recent headlines, your favorite quarterback, Joe Burrow, Dom destroyed his calf. Joey goes down. Yeah, it, luckily it's not looking too serious. It's a calf strain. I will say that some people that I've heard talk about this who have had calf strains – weren't right for a full year after that yes. but this is a different caliber player this right Joe Shiesty. he's also not a guy that runs all over the field he'll be stable in a pocket he'll be fine yeah, he came back from one major league injury i don't doubt that he can at least come back yeah the his. the concern is it when you're hobbling on one leg if you're favoring the other do you create these unnatural movements that create a risk for bigger injury right that's the big thing if he can just avoid that he'll be fine he's definitely not missing any any season with this injury right, yeah. fair enough yeah and i think that uh i think the first two games are divisional games so i'm worried about him not being fully healthy for those games um and i also i, I think he likes to extend the play a little bit and get those try to move the chains a little bit uh, when he's like crumped, crumped yeah. up in the pocket I think, and also that is planting foot when he's about to release the football. So, yeah. I would be very, and also he's trying to get a new, he's trying to get a new, he's trying to get a new contract. <laughs> so it's like, it it is very important. So I'd be very tentative. I feel bad for the dude. Which though. sucks. He's he in probably, my division, he and probably I probably should have been extended him. already. <laughs> yeah, so that that kind of sucks for sure. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, you know he got to say. I mean, Justin Herbert got extended and doesn't have a playoff win, so. Uh, I don't really agree with that contract, but God bless him. But um, <laughs> yeah, Joe Burrow. I respect Joe Burrow. And I hope he gets back safe. You know, ho- hopefully, you know, gets back all healthy. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think it is crucial because who's who's the backup on the Bengals? Who do they got? Trevor Simeon. Yeah. Uh, not winning much. Trevor Simeon. Come on. He can throw to those when receivers. You have to do, when you have to do the higher register, like, 
Yeah, that's how you know he's thick. He can throw to those receivers. He can go like three and three in the first six. I can see it. You know? In the first six, yeah, but the, like we're not talking any crazy amount of time that's getting missed from this. Well, just, just in Again, case, this. just in case, because how yeah. do you how do you feel? I mean, like the Bengals should they take their time? That was my next question. Should they take their time with yeah. Joe Burrow? Maybe give him six games. Hope no, that your team can get no. through it, or do you rush it? Because I mean, I say no only because. You know, you're sitting in a division with the Ravens and the Browns to begin with, two teams that are destined to compete this year. And the Steelers, who are always, you know, yeah. annoying in there. Um, so, I don't know how they were there last year, but... Yeah. <laughs> They're always going to be there, man. That's Mike Tomlin thing. <laughs> right. Uh, but before we get off Joe Burrow, I mean, the first two games, you got Browns. Which I was, the, yep. I was going to, like, buy the ticket to go. A couple of my buddies were going to go to the game, and then Joe got hurt. We were like, oh, I don't know if we're going to do that. <laughs> Think about that. That's yeah. a bit of a you don't want to go see Trevor Sanders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come so, on. I mean, with that said, it's Browns, then Ravens, and then it gets soft from that. So Trevor Simeon could go for him, too. In that span, but here's the thing. I'm telling you, Trevor Simeon is the truth. Yeah, but that's not Trevor <laughs> Simeon thing. That's the rest of the Bengals thing. Right, so, right. with that said, if Burrow comes back and he's clearly hobbled against the Browns, don't put him out there against that Ravens defense. Don't put him out there against Rokon Smith. He's If he's hobbled, if he's not at least 90% speed, yeah. he's getting wrecked in week yeah. two against and, the Ravens. And, like and our defense plays good against Burrow, too, as they well. Do. They like, do. Burrow's only beaten us one time. Yeah. And he's never beaten us in Cleveland. So it's yeah. like, you want to be, you want to make sure. Yeah, yeah so I'm the be, first two. <laughs> I like so that. They see <laughs> several weeks. To be honest, if I were, if I were a betting man, he's probably going to start. He's probably going to start week one. Totally. How he looks, I don't know. But I don't think okay. he's going to do any practices before. I think I don't think he'll do like a, maybe a week or two leading up to the game, but. No, no training camp, no none of that for, yeah. for Joe Burrow. And that's the concern yeah. is if he comes out either hobbled or rusty. If he's not really in midseason condition in week one, which is tough, but he's a guy that can do that, obviously. Yeah. If he can't get, get back to full speed, then they could be – they're in trouble for the first two games. But, again, it really softens yeah. up after that. The Bengals will be fine. Burrow will be fine. The first two might not go their way. Yeah. yeah so, in other I news, hope. completely random, um, DeAndre Hopkins – Goes to the Tennessee Titans. Yeah. That's pretty nasty. That's that's yeah. some pretty nasty business right there. But, you know, all in all, I mean, the Titans, they're, you know, they've been around the past few years. I mean, last year they were off to a good start before everything fell apart. Um, then the Jaguars had a miraculous end to the season. Um, they they could have easily been in the playoffs last year, but what, they lost like the last five, like, last game, five, right? like well, no, no, seven yeah. games. Yeah, they lost the last seven games last year. Yeah. Um, they were, I think, what seven? Yeah, they started seven and three and ended seven and ten. That's that's pretty insane. So they they are still a good team. They didn't get rid of too much. They yeah. still got Derrick Henry. Um, they need to stay healthy. Yeah, and that's all there is to it. You, when you don't have Tannehill or Henry, you don't have your offense. Yeah. I mean, so, not not saying like Tannehill's out here, you know, a you know huge difference maker. But for that team, I mean. Compared to what else you could have, like, you know, Will compared Levis. Compared to last year's and, Malik Willis. Yeah, yeah. and then Tannehill this year, him and, and now Will <laughs> Levis. I, I, yeah, I'd rather have yeah, yeah. the well, Which, Levis, but, I'm hearing good things out of training camp so yeah. far. It's early. We're talking July football. Yeah. But it, it's looking yeah. better than it was on draft night. <laughs> right, <laughs> I'll right. say that. I think, I think that um, D-Hop, just D-Hop, D- like, specifically, I thought... He tweeted he wanted to be with someone a caliber team, a team that's ready to go. He's in the late ends of his career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to win, right? Yeah. So I just think that move was just odd. Especially I mean, it makes sense. It's Vrabel's his guy. You know, Coach Vrabel's yeah. his guy. Yeah. But uh, it just didn't make any sense because, like, they're not going to win this. Like, they're not. Yeah. They're, the roster's not there in comparison. Especially to what, like, Baltimore, Baltimore was interested. But, well, we were, we were interested. Like, we were, yeah. like, on DraftKings, we were, like, minus 125. Oh, to wow. get D-Hop. Yeah. Because wow. of Deshaun and, like, the, the roster yeah. and, like, whatever, whatever. But I don't think we wanted them because we didn't want to stunt the growth of our, stunt the growth of our young receivers, which yeah. made sense. But still, he could have gone to... Baltimore. I, he That's well, the he biggest. Baltimore. He could have gone to, like... I don't know. I don't know what the other teams potentially could have gone to, but like, because I don't the think the Bills, the Bills and the Bills, Chiefs, Bills and Chiefs they didn't have any cap room, so they couldn't yeah. get him. Uh, but the Pats, I think the Pats would have made more sense for him to go than yeah. the Titans. They were interested but, as well, yeah. But I, he, he it was made a visit. It was, he made yeah, a visit it was weird there. seeing Bill Belichick interested. He made a visit there, and I just think. Receiver, right? yeah, how about yeah. that? I think the Titans were. I think the Titans were going to pay him more money though. 
But, so that's why they just said Reno. Yeah, so it was, I think he was kind of conflicted whether he wanted money or to win. Right. I mean, might yeah. as well take this this bit. What it was two years. I yeah, mean, one year, that's two year the deal. part I'm most shocked by. Yeah, it seemed yeah. like a perfect situation where he go play with this guy for one year. Get paid for one year, yeah. prove himself that he still exactly. got it, Come and get more and money somewhere else, right? And yeah. then do two years with a contender, right? Right. But hey, if he thinks Vrabel is the salesman, man, Vrabel's a good coach. Vrabel's <laughs> a good. Career, if he yeah. can tell him that they they're a contender and Hopkins believes it, who knows? Right. That that team has a high ceiling, right? But they've also got a low floor, so 100%. we'll see. Yeah. Absolutely. So Jonathan Taylor, rocking headlines. I don't know, like yeah. uh, that's a that's a <laughs> yeah. that's a pretty cr- crazy situation. Um, Urse, who is the general manager or owner? He's uh, the owner. Oh, oh, god damn, the owner. So Jonathan Taylor's beefing with the owner of the entire Indianapolis Colts, um, Jim Urse. I, I honestly, this is a pretty crazy story. Um, cause he, now he wants out, you know, Ursay went to the media, said, you know, if I die or if he was, you know, not to play another football game, nobody would care, which is, <laughs> I don't know crazy. what made him yeah, say it's that. Crazy, like, crazy. It's, yeah, is it that is, deep? If yeah. I die tonight and Jonathan Taylor's out of league, no one's going to miss us. Yeah. The league goes on. We know that National Football League rolls on. Exactly. What the hell? Why is are he we right? About? Why are we suddenly skipping to Jonathan Taylor being out the league when he still has a lot of juice? Yeah, left? yeah. He won the rushing title two years ago. And there's some shady stuff about the non-football injury list being brought into play, yeah. where he wouldn't lose a contract year if he sat out, wouldn't get paid, and wouldn't like exhaust a contract year, meaning he'd have to be back the following year on the Colts. If they put him on the NFI list, it's shady stuff where they're citing a back injury, which is clearly not the back that's hurting. Right. It's and the he pockets. Said, and he said that. And he said, like, stop, stop saying it's my, my back. Yeah. My back doesn't hurt. And I, and I think what I would say, and I saw this on, I forgot, but I, mean, like, I forgot what show, maybe first take, but there was, like, a solution to this. Not to Jonathan Taylor specifically, just running backs, like, making more money. I just think, I, me, as a quarterback, I'm like, yo, I don't, like, rearrange my contract because, yeah. like, our team is nothing without X. Right. Saquon. Like, That's the Giants are a prime example. Like, pro, Giant, like, Giants are a prime example. Like, if I'm Daniel Jones, like, I don't know. Me, yeah. me, as a, me, as a, me as a quarterback would, yeah, point there would tell the Jones. general manager, like, yo, this, this is our best player right on our team. He Man. deserves the money. We should figure something out. He really got $40 a year. So, Jesus. so yeah. I think it just – I think it takes – people on the team to like get this going you know what i'm saying right that's what i would do so there's some of that i i if we we can just dive head first in running backs right now so i think <laughs> do we want to dive into running backs now yeah, go ahead, yeah, no, yeah, so go ahead. the thing is this is a very touchy situation you got to treat running backs similarly to how you do the rest of the team to an extent but they're not the same as the rest of the team this is a a position where you hand the ball to the guy, he runs head first into a brick wall. Mm-hmm. Play after play. He does it 20-something times a game mm-hmm. on these bell cow backs. Mm-hmm. They deserve something that other people aren't getting. They're getting hurt at a higher clip than other yeah. people, so why aren't they getting paid more? Exactly. Yeah. There's like some... the end of their lifespan, or not lifespan, but the end of their career span is at like 30 years old, which is pretty... And that's insane. on a very high end. And, and that's pretty unfair considering right. how NFL contracts work. Yeah. Like we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing running backs at like 26, 27, 28 starting to dissolve out the league because right. no one wants to pay them because they're that close to 30. And you get a first rounder that's drafted at, what, 22 years old, right? They get their right. four years on the rookie contract and then the fifth year extension. They're 27 years old. That just how gets weird. proportionally... Yeah. All their production is on the rookie contract before they're really getting paid. With that said, highest paid running back in the league this year, B. John Robinson. Right. He's going to have the biggest cap hit out of any running backs. He hasn't ran the ball once in the NFL yet. <laughs> How fair is that? Yeah, that's not fair. And, and I think that, and also I saw this on, t- on TV as well, I think that running backs should have an exception out of college to come to the league earlier. Because yeah. of the like contract, because like of the that. contract situation, because yeah. by the time, like you said, four years are at twenty seven, twenty six, it's like why we would pay you this money, whatever, right? But let's say you get an eighteen year old, a nineteen year old, right? That's like ready to 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 do that, right? Ready to be in the league. You could pay him at twenty four. Mm-hmm. You could pay him at twenty three. You know what I'm saying? And so it's not that much. Okay, this makes sense for us, you know, to yeah. do that. So 
I'm totally with you on that. And there's third, there's like wide receiver threes that make more money than some running backs. Yeah, in the that's, that's true. That don't get that much time. You and know, and it sucks because like what doesn't go in their favor is I saw you know stats like the last what ten Super Bowl champions didn't have. You know, a majorly yeah. named running back that yeah. was RB one. Yeah, and that's it. Doesn't go in their favor, which sucks. I mean, but I mean, we're we're talking about like Patrick Mahomes, but I, you know, all these other you know fantastic quarterback teams. But but I think, I, and one thing about that though was like, I don't know. I feel like there's been teams that were almost, like it's not the running backs' fault that they didn't win a Super Bowl. I feel like the Niners, if they, the Niners could have won the Super Bowl yeah. potentially if they were at, were healthy, and that's CMC. Like, there's teams where it's like. That that they could have yeah. Miles Sanders is a good running back. They could have won the Super Bowl. Like there's just multiple teams that have gone there that just like uh, did Todd Gurley go to the, did that, was Todd Gurley on that Rams team? Yeah, yeah. I believe that. That, was, that yeah. lost to the Pats ten to yeah. three. Yeah. Like if they win that, that Todd Gurley was a monster that year. So I right. just feel it's like fair. it's not. I think like running backs could get you there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like Nick Chubb won us a playoff game. Like if we won, beat the Chiefs. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm saying like I don't like that. Oh, they don't win the Super Bowls. Like cornerbacks don't win your Super Bowls either. <laughs> no, I'm just like, <laughs> they actually can, they actually lose yeah. you like they can lose you games like yeah. Eli Apple lost the Bengals like the Super fucking Bowl. Eagles you know yeah. what I'm saying yeah. like yeah. James Bradbury like yeah. that, that's a, not a fair assessment to running backs that they are not that important because they don't yeah. win you Super Bowls like that's not fair yeah yeah fair. they're a key element to the team and I I'm willing to bet that if you go back to the Super Bowl champions even even though they didn't have these great runs like who's to say there wasn't one rush. That led to them getting the one seed that kept home field advantage. They right. got the Super Bowl, and they might be a leader in the locker room or something. There, there is a lot of extraneous elements that can't get calculated in by stats. Exactly. So I, I'm with you 100. percent So I like what you said though with uh, getting out early. early. Yeah. yeah. That that's, that's one proposed tape. solution. Beautiful like, tape. and another one that I heard. I also don't know my source, so shout out to First Take or whoever the hell yeah, else yeah, I listen yeah, to. Yeah. Uh, We're but, just shouting out to First Take. All yeah, yeah. We're just taking their content. <laughs> yeah. uh, but so, somebody said, I thought this might have been on the radio, but um, having only half of the salary count against the cap, mm. and if we weigh the cap differently. Mm. And don't tell me that these owners and, and teams don't have enough money to like yeah, yeah. pay double, right? If if Saquon was gonna make twenty million and only eleven counts against the cap, it's the same as is against cap right now, yeah. but he ends up actually getting his, getting what he likely deserves. Just an example that I think Saquon's worth twenty mil. Compared to that team without him, I think he's worth twenty million. But if you only if everybody else thinks like with an injury risk everything calculated in mm-hmm. those numbers guys think the right number is eleven million mm-hmm. they really thought it was ten Saquon made it eleven but oh, still yeah. like Sweet it <laughs> if we can get them extra money somehow some different way then all is good so another yeah. idea like what if 12. they get a higher percentage of their jersey sales than other mm, players yeah something like that something right? like that yeah I and if, like if that. they tell the fans that. And we all feel bad for running backs like we currently do. I'm probably going out and buying John Taylor jerseys right, tomorrow. Right, right. Even I, I'm not a Colts fan. I'm a John Taylor fan. I they, think got some, they got some cool jerseys though. Yeah, but I'm it's just the, the, it's the motion of like I feel like everyone should be on like let's get these running back fucking paid. Correct. You know what I'm correct. So, everybody that's not a running back. And, 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 and with some organizations too. like don't some organizations don't move like that. Like yeah. my, the Browns, like we pay Nick Chubb because yeah. he's our offense and we value him. Because he's really good at football, yeah. as he should. You know, yeah. like he should get paid the way he, like he's yeah. arguably one of the best running backs in the league. So some organizations aren't like that. I just feel like we need to get all organizations on the same page. Correct, yeah. correct. And next collective bargaining agreement, we got a while before that hits. Love so that. you know, it's you gotta come up with something as a stopgap. And it's I think one of those would be great solutions, but got a lot of stronger minds than this table <laughs> thinking about that right. somewhere. I'd yeah. really hope. So while while we're on the topic, let's talk about our top five running backs. Let's yeah. do it. So yeah. do you want to do five, four, three, and then one, two? Or? Let's each do our five fours. Okay. And then uh, okay. we'll we'll progress through that. Perfect. All right. So Bill, number five and number four. Number five, I've got Austin Eckler. Okay. Uh, Austin Eckler primarily is on this list because of his receiving ability, uh, and you know, fantasy wise, he's maybe the number one running back. Right. But Two. It, he's uh I, I like Eckler. I can't put him higher than five with the guys I got in front of him. 
including number four, who I've already talked about a couple times, Saquon Barkley. Yeah. I think Saquon's one of the best pure rushers in the league uh, and also is gaining more ability out of the backfield. If he stayed healthy, he could be number one. There's yeah. no question. Right, but right. he didn't, and who knows if he does. Hopefully so, he does. Hopefully he does. Yeah, yeah. Knock on wood, hopefully he does. But still, um, the, outside of that, I, I could see him getting higher. I think he earned more money than he's got. I'm curious to see if he stays on the Giants. I'm curious to see what he'd be able to do in a different organization. Yeah. But I think Brian Dable can really unlock the next level for Saquon. I'm hoping that happens this year. That's fair. So I'm going number five. I'm going Saquon. Um, I mean, I think easily this year, I think he has the growth to be number one um, when it's all said and done. I think he, he's explosive. Um, it was kind of like last year. It was up in the air whether, you know, he was the driving factor or Daniel Jones' resurgence was, was the factor. But, you know, I like Saquon Barkley. I mean, he's... I mean, we, we see him twice a year, Eagles fan. So it's uh, it's a little, you know, I mean, we shut him down in the playoffs, so that's all I've got to say. Yeah. But um, regardless, I like Saquon at five. Um, number four, I'm going Derrick Henry. i got to still show him love. He, he's still a beast. He's still eating. Um, you know, he's going to still have an important role this year on the Titans. I don't know how many more important roles he has left, but I, I still I still like him at four. He's a dog. That's yeah. an upset. I, um, I, do, I do like Eckler a lot. But I don't. So whenever I, don't. I whenever <laughs> whenever I see stats of running backs, right? Whenever I see Browns game, whenever I see Nick Chubb, like he's one of these to like have twenty plus rushes after contact or whatever, yeah. right? At five, I have Dalvin Cook, and Dalvin Cook's in that list. Dalvin Cook okay. is like he's broke. He's broken. He's a, he has a lot of records in the league since he's been in the league since he's been in the you know the bell cow over there in Minnesota. And I think he deserves his flowers. If he if he's healthy, he's top three running back in the league. And um, number number four, I got Saquon um, because I don't think he's better than the three I have ahead of him. But oh I, yeah, but Saquon's a dog. I love Saquon, and he was just over here at, at Latham Dicks. Did you go see him? I didn't go see him. I'm not a Giants fan, but. Um, Saquon's a dog. I wish nothing. Hey, he's gonna kill him. He's their offense. Yeah. So I just think that you know. Yeah, I think Daniel Jones will grow. I I think by all means, I think he's gonna be a left a lower portion of that offense than he was last year. It has to be if Giants are gonna be any kind yeah, of good. Yes, but yeah. still, I think he's gonna eat in that in the second year of that offense. Um, but yeah, I I like where you're at with that. Dalvin Cook almost made my list. The reason. I'm kind of gearing this toward what I expect in this upcoming season. Uh, I feel you. I so feel you if it weren't for my kind yeah. of bias toward that, yeah. I have no idea where the hell he, yeah. where I can he see lands. That. I can see and that. he could land in a really bad spot. There are a couple different spots that I don't think he'd do well. New England, New York, mm-hmm. and with the Jets. Um, so if he lands in one of those spots, I can't put him in my top five. Right. I actually got a couple guys ahead of him. If he lands in Miami, he he squeezes in over actually, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> and I think, and even if, and even if I was a scratch out Cook, uh, I think this season Etienne has a better better season than Eckler. I, I think I think this I think this season Travis Etienne like has is underrated. He's a dog. Yeah, he's a dog. Very underrated. And that, off, that that offense is only gonna get better with Calvin. Only gonna get better with yeah. the other season with Dougie. So I think it'd be good. I'm gonna challenge that. I think Tank Bigsby is gonna play just the role as ETN. Okay. I think it's gonna okay. be fifty fifty. Yeah, okay. Uh so I think he really eats into ETN's workload. If you say we'll, so, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. No, I can I, 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 yeah. it your depends. One liner, your one liners are here. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> if you say so, yeah. <laughs> it depends. It all depends. I think yeah. ETN's uh, in fantasy obviously PPR, but I think his catch, catching ability is gonna I also think Tony Pollard, I don't think Dude Vaughn's gonna take that many snaps away no. from Tony Pollard. I just think Eckler... I always think off-season stuff is weird. Yeah. Like, off-season drama is always weird. No. Um, like, Stefan Diggs stuff. I don't really like the Bills this year because I, before that, but whatever. But, like, I just think Eckler was art... Like, had a, had a little Chargers, like, dispute. Yeah. And Kellen Moore is more pass-heavy, so I just think that... Yeah. Um, I think ETN or Pollard can have a better year than... Eckler, but I would draft Eckler if I could. <laughs> so number number three, number, number three, three, I've got Nick Chubb. So your boy comes in here. Nick Chubb leads the league in yards after contact. Yeah. Uh, so that that was a great stat yeah. that you already brought up. But um, he's honestly the most talented running back mm-hmm. in this list. I think mm-hmm. maybe my number two. It, it's close. It's neck and neck. Number two. Right. 
number one is just a freak. We'll talk about number two and number one in just a moment. Mm-hmm. But still, I, I think Nick Chubb might be the best in-between-the-tackles runner in the entire league. Uh, okay. I will say, he is the best in-between-tackles runner in the entire league. Yeah. And especially if Deshaun Watson doesn't really get his mojo back, right. he's got to be, for in that division, he's got to be a dog. Right, and right. I think he's got it in him. But uh, I'm sure I'll let you... Yeah, Talk we'll funny about the yeah, job. We'll just going out yeah, we'll discuss yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. No, number That's three, I'm, I'm going Josh Jacobs. It might, it might be a little bit of a homer like pick, that. but what he was able to accomplish in homer Las pick. Vegas last year, um, you know, I was huh homer, homer. pick. Oh, from an Eagles fan from upstate New York. Well, yeah, but you, Josh but, Jacobs a homer. Pick. But but you know how hard I was going for for the Raiders <laughs> last year. I I just I don't know. I want to see the Raiders do something in this league yeah. before like people decide to get rid of this team altogether. But. <laughs> Um, you know, Josh Jacobs, he, he was amazing. What he was able to accomplish on that shitty O-line, that shitty team in general. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the games that he pulled out, we were marveling over yeah. you know, that, that two touchdown, 300 yard game that he had. Like, like that what game, the fuck? Yeah, that game <laughs> that's the touchdown against Seattle last year was crazy. Like that, yeah. that's crazy. So, I mean, he's an unbelievable talent. I hope, you know, he's another running back that I hope eventually gets his, his big deal. It's, up in the air, he's going to have to have another good year this year to get paid. Yeah. I mean, if a team even decides to pay him, right, um, right. Which, which sucks. But nonetheless, I do hope he gets out of Las Vegas because I really think he can help a team go to the Super Bowl or win it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm waiting to see which running back we can see break that little curse of yeah. 10 straight Super Bowl champs without a yeah, real hopefully. notable big guy. Yeah, but he's arguing with it. He's not, he's not at training camp either, though. He's trying to get yeah. his contract yeah. set up too, but... Um, three for me, um, Derrick Henry. He's a cool. dog. He's, he's a, a dog. dog. Like, that's all you gotta say. He's like, a dog. He's just a dog. <laughs> I, I, I think. Uh, I even do. I do like the upside of Saquon being better this year than Derrick Henry. Uh, but I mean, yards at the con- after after contact. Um, and I think that he's just so important on his team. So yeah, Derrick Henry for me at three. Yeah. So my number two is Saquon. Uh, uh, Chris McCaffrey. CMC's a dog. He does everything on the. He does everything. Um, I think his injury, his injury past, puts him at two for me. Um, but I know that CMC is gonna score. Like if I were like I bet on like I don't bet on teams anymore. Yeah, all teams kind of suck to me, especially like <laughs> like my own team loses and then I'm betting on another team and they lose. I don't really care about so. I always bet on CMC to score a touchdown. I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. So, number two, I'm going with your guy, Nick Chubb. I mean, I love Nick Chubb. Um, He, like you said, he is the Browns, (laughs) basically, at this point until... Until what? I mean, I I fully... The reason why I have him at two is I I fully have Deshaun uh, Watson coming back up to speed this year and kind of taking more of the load from Chubb Mm -hmm. and putting it onto himself. Um, Ayo. But um yeah I'm going with Nick Chubb like, like he's obviously I mean uh, I mean it's up in the air on who I think is more talented out of Chubb and Christian McCaffrey who is inevitably my number one by by default um but we'll we'll get to that uh but yeah he's he's talented he's carrying the Cleveland Browns of all teams sorry Dom yeah, you know, thanks. I, no, the, no, the, no, the, it's all good you know the, the Browns were pretty <laughs> shitty for a while it's there and, and now good. now they got Nick Chubb um but yeah I'm I'm going Nick Chubb at number two I mean he's a, it's just like Derrick Henry he's a, he's a dog what else do I yeah. what else do I gotta say so my number two and I did not think this was gonna be controversial when I came up with this <laughs> list. But it's Jonathan Taylor, who's not even on anybody else's list, it appears. So, uh, Jonathan Taylor, for me, is the most talented all-around back mm. in, in pure running. So, in between the tackles and outside the tackles, I like him rushing the ball the most out of anybody. Mm. I will say CMC is my number one, but before I get off Jonathan Taylor, the only reason oh. he's ahead of Nick Chubb for me is because of his explosiveness. Because okay. of his ability to break the home run at any point from the field. And we didn't see that last year. I think it's easy to forget about how good he is the year prior. And Almost we here. also don't know what the Colts are going to be this year. If Anthony Richardson's the real deal and they kind of grow up together a little bit, that offense could be serious. That's major rushing talent between the two of those. But yeah. we got to figure out what Anthony Richardson is. He might take a couple of years to develop, and we know the shelf life on running backs we just talked about. It's not great. So I don't know if we really see that be 100% of what it can be. But 
I like Jonathan Taylor number two, and I'm shocked that you guys don't have him at least top five. Yeah. Um, I could uh, see. I'd, I'd take out Derrick Henry for me and put JT in there. Yeah, yeah, you're not right or, now. Or Cook, or Cook. Yeah. like I could do. Or I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. I mean, the only reason I have him out of the top five is kind of like what you said. I'm not expecting him. I I don't know. I don't know if the Colts pull a trade. I feel. I don't know. I don't know if he plays for the Colts this year. I don't know. It, it's yeah. like it's a pretty shitty situation. That's rough. That's rough. It's a very rough situation. On top of that. He didn't. I'm not saying yeah. he didn't perform well last year because of him. I mean, it was mostly because the team was so awful. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like I can't put him above the five guys that I have because I just don't. I just don't know what we're gonna get yeah. out of Jonathan Taylor anymore unless he goes to a different team. And if then if they trade him to just some random team yeah. and he just doesn't fit their offense, that's that's trouble. another that's another so. year of. Jonathan Taylor doing pretty bad. Yeah. So and I've got McCaffrey number one. McCaffrey, yeah. Yeah. same, same. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't need to go too deep into this part. I mean, but I, I, I do have, I do have Nick, I do have Nick Chubb at one. And here we go. Um, oh, I can see how yeah. CMC. No, nah, it is. No, I'm kidding. It is <laughs> but also, fine. Madden does have Nick Chubb number one as well. <laughs> um, but so I don't feel so bad. All right, about go Madden. <laughs> yeah, but uh, nah, I just think um, Nick Chubb. What he, what he represents, he's also a big Batman guy. I'm a big Batman guy as well. But Nick Chubb doesn't say <laughs> Nick Chubb doesn't say a single thing. I forgot to factor that into my rankings. But <laughs> well, yeah, Nick that, Chubb, that Nick might Chubb, move to number one for me. <laughs> right? Nick Chubb doesn't say anything. Christian McCaffrey's like, and that's why I like the Browns right now because Amari Cooper don't say anything. Nick Chubb yeah. doesn't say anything. They, but they fucking they play every they play their heart out every fucking Sunday and they don't celebrate <laughs> in the fucking end zone. They just do their job. Yeah, and I feel like everyone. Everyone in life should just do their job and what they're best at and go from there. I like where you're at with that. That was deep. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that was just honestly, deep. Honestly, like, stop all the talking and just do. I mean, the, and, and that's what the only doing. reason I have Christian McCaffrey is because he was able to breathe, and I get it, he's talented, um, but he was able to breathe a new life into that 49ers team that I didn't really think they could have that new that new win that they got last year um, when they got them because they went from wherever they were kind of I don't want to say shambles but they were they were kind they were they were a little bit of a mess before they got that McCaffrey yeah. um, trade off and then McCaffrey comes and they were just like all right this team might just be going to the Super Bowl yeah and other than that it's he can do everything I mean he can pass the ball if you really need him to but mainly he catches a lot still yeah. and still and still runs the ball so. I mean, Dom brings up you could bring up a good point yeah. about his injury history, though. So, I mean, we'll see. It's either but I, I got him one right now. Yeah. Chubb number two. We'll see what happens this year. I think I, I put Chubb number two because he kind of his last you know few games of last year. Yeah, they were. Yeah, he, he had a tough stretch. Right. Um, that kind of screwed me over on some bets. Um, I <laughs> strictly remember that. Um, but it can go either way. Yeah, I, I can see it going either way. I got a quick McCaffrey story to to wrap this segment up here. Uh. I went to high school here in upstate New York, uh, running back for my high school, who's now the coach of that same high school team, played for the Iowa Hawkeyes when mm-hmm. they were like undefeated in the regular season. Mm-hmm. They're, they get their bowl game against Stanford, mm-hmm. and they go up against this team led by young running back Christian McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. And I watched Christian McCaffrey run all over <laughs> the Iowa Hawkeyes. And my guy Jordan Canzari was, by all means, he was a stud running back, mm-hmm. like not Heisman level, but he was stud running back at that time. He had some workouts for NFL teams and everything, but I'm watching this There's little levels. like scamper, scampering Christian McCaffrey run all over the field, <laughs> and I'm like, this is wild. It's wild that this doesn't translate to the NFL. Because at that time, there were no white running backs outside of Peyton Hillis. I'm like, there's no way this happens. Hey, but come like on. Hey, Peyton happens. Hillis was the cover of Madden. That's right. Come on. That's right. And shout out Peyton Hillis, saving <laughs> yeah, lives. You know, you know. Know. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm like, there's no way this translates, and it sucks. Like, this kid looks really exciting. It's, it, he'd be fun to watch if this would translate to the next level. Right. And I was dead wrong. Like, he had it right from year one in the NFL. And I think that has a little bit more oomph behind Christian McCaffrey at number one for me is just remembering how explosive he's been right. through college. Well, and, and he's yeah. one of few I, I'm not a big college. Kinda revived his career as well last year. Yeah. I mean, we were kinda yeah. when he yeah, started like, the season on the Panthers, well, like is this injuries. is this it for him? Like, you know, yeah, is because of the injuries gonna... and the status of the Panthers, yeah. it was tough. It was so I'm tough, happy for but... that trade. It, it probably breathed a new life into him as Correct. well though. Yeah. You know, because he was able to be a contender now. Yeah. 
and he's a clear leader in that Correct. in that locker yeah. room. Like, and I, that. I can't really put Nick give Nick Chubb too many brownie points on the celebration piece. Brownie points. Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> is, 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 <laughs> Christian McCaffrey doesn't do a whole lot of celebrate. I see what you did there. Chris McCaffrey doesn't do a whole lot of celebrating in the end zone either. I think yeah, he's a good yeah. kid. I, I like him as a, uh, as a person just... and a player. But maybe he's a scumbag. Who knows? Nah. But <laughs> nah, I, don't think <laughs> I don't think he is. I don't think he is. Uh, I think he's just built different. But, um, yeah, so let's let's move on. Let's rank some uh, wide receivers now. I think it's a good segue. So, again, let's do 5-4, but let's start from this side of the table. Yeah, so I, at 5, um, have Booper Buck. Cooper Cup, um, I think, <laughs> okay. uh, but there's an argument, like, he was hurt last year, so, like, but I have to respect him. I respect yeah. him, what he, what his season was, what he did two years ago. He's already and, hurt. And, um, he is already hurt, um, but I, I, there's, there's arguments, though, for C.D. Lamb, Mike Evans, Amari Cooper, Terry McLaurin, A.J. Brown. I feel like, like Terry McLaurin's going to have a huge year, too. Me, too. Me, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a big, big argument for A.J. Brown. Like, A.J. Brown was a dog last year, and I think yeah. he was a, he showed top five receiver capability. Um, obviously, when D-Hop's healthy. Um, and if I – Diggs. You know, if it was not Cooper Cup, Diggs. Yeah. But I, right now, I have Cooper Cup at five. Who you got at four? Um, Jamar Chase. He's a dog. I know I keep saying that, but what he does in Kansas City is crazy. He's genuinely a dog. And though. Buffalo Bill, like what he does, like it's, he comes, he comes alive in the playoffs. And I see him twice a year, and I'm like always worried about him because he's just like always open. Um, the way he his release, his speed, his length, uh, balls, and I just think that you know his connection with Joe Burrow is the best duo in football. Yeah. So that's that. Now my my five and four, like you know, shout out to AJ Brown. He's not in my top five. Yeah, that's however, bad. that's kind of. Bad. I know, I know. Yeah. However, he's six. Like I mean, the only reason I have this guy at five is because I'm a homer for this player. You already yeah. probably know. But I have it's Jalen Waddle. I have him at five. I think he's about to have a huge, 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 wow. huge, huge year. Yeah. Um, because with Tua back, I feel like the Tua and Hill connection is going to be something that's going to be really feared. Hmm. But I think is going to leave the. If you open the field for Jalen fucking Waddle, that's that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, I top think, five is big. Like I that's know, huge. but that that's just because I wanna. I just wanted to shout out Jalen Waddle. I probably could have done it in different ways. I could have just randomly said shout out to Jalen Waddle, but <laughs> yeah, put him in your top five. <laughs> yeah. that's crazy. Listen, he's he's. I I'm sticking. I'm for sticking all the reasons Jared Goff is his fifth best quarterback. Yeah, Jalen Waddle. Sense. I got I got to shout good. out these guys. I got to <laughs> give them their their flowers. But um, AJ Brown though. I mean, I think I think he can easily be top three. Like, if he has a, I, I think he's gonna have a better year than he did last year. Um, yeah. You know, it's just another year of that Eagles offense being together. I even think you know Devonte Smith's gonna have a fucking better year than he did um, last year. But yeah, I got I got Whittle, uh, w- Whittle, wow, damn, <laughs> Waddle at five. I got Tyreek Hill at four. You know, the Dolphins um, duo. I, it's fast. I really hope Tua stays healthy because these two dudes. Is this are your list or his list? <laughs> hey, Tyree Kill is huge, man. No, no it's Tyree Kill. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, I got the I got the two Dolphins wide receivers. I think you know if Tua is going to be healthy, hopefully Chip is Chip Skylark still there as the backup. He's backup. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's either I, him or Mike White at the at the number two. Well, but. Mike White would be spicy with those two. I think though. You know, maybe. Mike F and White. Mike, Mike fucking White. Um, yeah, I got those two. They're the fastest, in my opinion, the fastest in the league. You know, 99 speeds on that, and I'm pretty sure. I haven't looked. Yeah, I think 98, 99. Yeah, yeah Tyreek Hill. Yeah, yeah, Tyree yeah. Kill, I mean, he still had, I mean, a lot of people were expecting him to decline last year, and yeah. he, he didn't. Definitely. I mean, he had another Tyreek Hill year. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I, so I'll, I'll run with that. I AJ Brown didn't make my list, but I wouldn't be, I'd give him like plus 110 odds to be better than almost anybody on my list from right. one through five. Mm-hmm. So I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if he's like, how the hell did we leave him off at the yeah, end of right, this year? Right. And I, I think that's something that's going to be underrated about the Eagles offense. It's like these guys are young, and they're going to get more and more years to play together, yeah. which I think will do. Well, I think A.J. Brown probably will be top three next year, maybe even one if he has, like like you said. It's possible, but I, at yeah. the same time, like they have so much talent on that offense yeah. that – it wouldn't shock me that much to be have him like number fifteen either, because it, it's That's just fair. so stacked they can go any which way. That running back room particularly is nuts. So <laughs> there's I, a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I I can't really put him in the top five, but he's definitely not far out. He's probably my number six. 
Uh, so at number five, though, I have Devontae Adams. And I just can't leave this guy off. He did some crazy stuff I can't, last I year can't put four people ahead of him. That's crazy. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, you're a Raiders guy now, so. <laughs> I mean, hey, 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 but come on. That's Devontae Adams. Like, yeah. If he's not one or two, I don't know. So, yeah, he's proven himself. By now, okay. like the fact that he's number five, I feel like I'm just fine being low. Okay. If anything, yeah, I got Devonte Adams in my top five. I think he will produce Yo, he's this year, five, even sure. with even with crap quarterback. I don't expect Jimmy Jimmy Garoppolo to do anything. I don't expect him to be on the field past week five. Okay. If he's even on week on the field in week one, oh, but, yes, but yeah. they lost yeah. him <laughs> Right, right. That that situation could be tough, but I don't know if. There is some news coming out here where Devontae Adams might not even be on the Raiders for very long. Mm-hmm. He might be requesting a trade based on news that hasn't come out yet. Right, right. So we'll see where Adams ends up. If he ends up on the Jets, which is a real possibility, then by all means, I think he jumps up this list significantly. But right now, I got him at five. Mostly just because the team sucks. They could trade uh, Zach Wilson for <laughs> hey, Devontae Adams. Why not? I'm sure the Raiders would do something silly like <laughs> That's the most Raiders thing I've ever heard. <laughs> exactly, right? It makes sense. It only makes sense. At number four, I got Tyree Kill. Yeah. So I, I'm right there with right. you on Tyree Kill. Yeah. I, he hasn't looked stellar in camp yet. I think some of the off-field stuff has been a distraction for him. Hmm. I don't think he's taking the off-season seriously as he often does. I think Miami's kind of doing now. something no, to him fine. a little bit right now. So I'm concerned. I'm not going to act like I'm not concerned about Tyree Kill. And because of the attention that Hill draws, I, I like your take on Waddle. I think... Hill opening up the field for Waddle very well could lead to Waddle having a better year than Hill, but it's still, let's be real, the number one coverage is going to be on Tyreek Hill. Right. He is the better yeah. player right now, but who knows for how of long, course. right? Yeah. So that's my number four. Right, so who's your number three? Moving down to number three, I got Jamar Chase. So Jamar Chase, I agree for yeah, similar yeah. reasons. Yeah, I have three as well. He's got insane catch radius. He's very reliable. He, he is the prototypical wide receiver that you want on your team. Right. You build a guy on Madden, you're building Jamar Chase. I'm He's good. in the image of Calvin Potential, Johnson, yeah. right? Yeah. So you want speed and everything. You want 99 speed, but realistically, if you can't have that, you build Jamar Chase. So, and he can burn it over the top, too. His first however many weeks, he had like a 60-yard catch in his first yeah, six weeks last year or something yeah, like that. So it's not like he's slow by any means. It's just all that like jump ball yeah. stuff that he's capable of. It's nuts. I'm yeah, talking. I mean, yeah, I have him at number three as well, Jamar Chase. I mean, he's like, it, 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 yeah, yeah. I got him at number three. I mean, because it's just like he's the Joe Burrow of wide receivers. He's just reliable. He's just there. He catches mm-hmm. touchdowns, does right. his job. Right. Hard to guard is what it is, and he's just he's just there. Like you can't can't deny him. I have I have him at number three. I mean, he's he's just a dog. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, bro, he's just a dog. I um. I got Tyreek at three. Okay. I think Tyreek is more explosive. Also, I think Tyreek for his size is as good of a catcher. Yeah. As, like Jamar. He'll can take a jump um, ball out of your hands. Yeah, and he I has think him, will. <laughs> and and I think you know he sees double teams and all that. That shit doesn't matter. And I I think uh I think he's elevated to his game. You know what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying I think Joe mm-hmm. Burrow. I think Jamar has elevated Joe Burrow Joe's game. But I feel like Joe's an elite quarterback. I'm not saying Tua isn't. I just think Tua is better with Tyreek Hill on the field. I think Tyreek just makes Tua so much better. Yeah. While Jamar and Joe kind of do it together. Um, pause. But um, but yeah, I think I, that's why I have Tyreek at three. <laughs> All right. All right. So you want to like that two one? Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll take number two first. I I had Cooper Cup here. Okay. So <laughs> Cooper Cup Bench is player. just a magician at getting <laughs> open. Feel, yeah. That separation that he had. Even in the end zone. Like, this isn't a guy that should be primed for end zone targets based on build. But he's a technician and with his route running, which as long as he's healthy enough to make the cuts that he made before, he wasn't doing this with strength or anything like that. I, I think he'll be fine. He just tweaked something in training camp. We'll see. I, I definitely made these rankings before that injury happened. Yes, me too. Uh, me too. But it, the projection is he's going to miss just a couple of weeks. A few weeks, yeah. Um, a few weeks, even worse than a couple of weeks, but still not yeah. too bad. I, I mean, I just, I don't know. I can't put a cup on there because, I mean, 
I don't know. I don't know if he, you know, sold his soul to be the Super Bowl MVP to where now he's just, like, not going to be healthy ever again. Like, he just put all he had into it. Um, but I can't I can't put him top five just because he missed all last year with an injury. Um, this year, coming back, seems like he's already hurt with a decent injury. His hamstrings, though, those are no jokes. Um, I just, and I don't know. I feel like by the time he comes back from this hamstring injury, you know, maybe week four, five, six, whatever, whatever the case may be, maybe the Rams are already fucking feeling so defeated that they don't even really play him to the extent that they that they should. So that's why I kind of put him uh, top five. But uh, number two, um, I have I have Devonte Adams. Yes, that's, I'm not gonna explain anything really. Um, the only reason I don't have him number one over Justin Jefferson is just because Jefferson's younger. I think he's going to be more important to his team than Devontae Adams is to the Raiders. Unless the Raiders magically end up in a position to make the playoffs. Then we can say Devontae Adams is way more important. Especially will, if Josh Jacobs doesn't return. Right, yeah. But like, like, will the Raiders get to no. a playoff position solely on Devontae Adams and his connection with Jimmy G? That's just a crazy sentence. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a crazy yeah. ass sentence to say. Yeah. Um, so that's why I have him too. Because Je- Justin Jefferson, he's he's the life literally of the Vikings right now. I'm not saying Kirk Cousins is, is bad or anything, but without Justin Jefferson, I don't know where that team would be. So it's kind of weird how I did this because I feel like five. I based it. I didn't base it off last year. I kind of based it on what's gonna happen this year, and I think one and two I based it off last year. Now what's gonna happen this year? So like, like it's weird how I did it. I do have Jay Jettis as two, okay, and Adams as one. Just route. I just think he's a better route runner. Yeah. Um, but I agree with Jay that. Jettis could be Jay like this season. Justin Jefferson can be, have a better season than Devontae Adams. It's probably, just gonna be another big ass year for, he'll, for he'll, Justin he'll, Jefferson. He'll be, he'll be number one, yeah. and 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 Devontae Adams number two. So those are kind of interchangeable for me. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing. I think. I, I'll also circle back on what I did wrong here in building my top fives. Running backs, I feel like I did it based on talent. And wide receivers, I also factored in a little bit more of their overall situation. Right. So right. wide receiver you. is important to take in, into consideration what the situation is. Exactly. It requires somebody throwing you the ball. It's exactly. a little easier to hand something off than it is to throw it downfield. Right. So you have to a bit... So there's a lot of variables here. Moving on, um, you know, we're going to do some quick hits here. So who from each conference, uh, who do you guys think is the quarterback that's facing the most pressure? I'll get mine's out the way um, because I feel like you guys are going to have better takes on this. But I'm going with Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills. I think there's there's a lot going into this. I mean, Diggs wants to go. Um, I think the Bills, if if Diggs goes... You're going to be in a little bit of a tough position because you got a lot of money wrapped in, in different spots on this team. I don't know if you're going to be able to really retool, but I, Josh Allen, you have to come out here and do your thing this year. I mean, last year, the playoffs, very embarrassing. I mean, I, I get it. It was it was chaotic scene. Everything that had gone down for the Bills up to that moment, you know, it. You know, I can't put you know too much on them losing, but this year... Like, you guys got to get it done. I mean, I don't think the Bills will go to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl, but there is a lot of pressure, in my opinion, on Josh Allen. And then in the NFC, I got Desmond Ritter. Um, I couldn't really, like, you know, pick someone in the NFC. I mean, yeah, I guess, you know, Dak. Chill, is... chill. Don't steal thunder over here. No, no, no that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, I guess Dak would probably be, you know, a better option. But, like, Desmond Ritter, I feel like the Falcons, they're, they're going to start getting, I don't want to say desperate, but... They got a decent team outside of Ritter, in my opinion. I really like their team. Yeah. Um, so I think if Desmond Ritter doesn't do things this year, I think they can replace him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On the Josh Allen piece, the reason I don't feel like he's under immense pressure is just because... I mean, I don't mean pressure to lose his job. I just mean pressure yeah. on his legacy in general. Totally yeah. agree. It's just that I, I think he'll have time to make it up afterwards. So that, okay. that's the that's thing. Fair. Like, I think other people are under more pressure just because the situation is going to change drastically. Yeah. If he doesn't play super well, I don't think they go into tank mode. I don't yeah. think they go to rebuild. I don't think that it creates a change in head coach or GM. or I don't think he loses teammates based on, well, maybe Diggs. That's that's a real that's possibility, a, yeah, that's a and that could be that's a, a tough loss. That could be a downfall thing. That could be the start of something bigger. Sorry, so uh, yes, some pressure. I just can't say the most pressure based on just that. Right. Desmond Ritter though, it's this is a weird spot. It's they've got, I agree, a lot of talent on that team compared to that division at yeah. least. So the NFC South is right for the taking. 
A hundred percent. Any team could do it. And it, who knows which one will, and who knows if it's going to be with a winning record or not. But <laughs> That's going to be a crazy. Because yeah. 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 the, the Panthers are weird. The, the, the Buccaneers with seven wins. The Panthers yeah. are weird. The Saints are weird. The Buccaneers, I mean, Baker Mayfield is fucking weird over there. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but so that will alleviate some pressure, but at the same time, he's got he's got to figure it out. If, he, didn't, he threw no interceptions last year, right? No, no, not at all. Great start. Two touchdowns, though. That's, That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I feel like Ritter just existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the last four games, just get us through the year, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's got like an AI player in two K in the wreck. You just press, keep yeah. pressing X to get the ball back. Yeah. <laughs> like someone lagged out. <laughs> just as my player. That's, That's it. it. That's what here for. That's my uh, fucking Ritter, man. Yeah. He, instead of his name playing on the back of his jersey, it should have just said anything's better than Mariota. Yeah. yeah. So, honestly, yeah, it was Mariota. Not, that, that yeah. was bad. Not Mariota yeah. should be a shit. So, what about you? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I like your takes. So, for the AFC, I'm going to go. Actually, I'll, I'm going to let you start with AFC. I was gonna let you start. <laughs> you know what? Fine, so, I'll start. I was no, gonna, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm I'm already let you start. For for AFC, you want? I think we we're both on the same page. We talked about it a little bit. Yeah. We got two guys in mind. Yeah. Tua Tango Viola, Deshaun Watson. Right. I don't. I don't think Tua is on that much. I don't think Tua is on them that much pressure. If you want to, if you want to talk about Deshaun, I can go somewhere else though. So you go. To, you go. To All right. Sounds good. So yeah. I, I'll just touch on them both quick. Yeah. So Tua, I feel is under pressure to stay healthy. I, I think if he can't show that he, stay, he can stay healthy, they have to move on. they're going to have yeah. to take a look in another direction. Yeah. They're going to have to look at something reliable. I feel you. But and I just don't think that's like in his control. I think under pressure is like yeah. stuff that's in your control. If you, pl- like, you playing and yeah. you play bad, then it's like, okay, under pressure. I feel like if Tua plays, if so, Tua, if Tua plays bad and he's healthy, yeah. or like he, does, he plays up to par, subpar, I don't think he's going to lose his job. So... That's that's where it gets a little hairy, right? So oh. because of his injury history, if he doesn't play well in the limited uh-huh. time that he is playing, I think that's just as much of a reason why they can look in a different direction. So Potentially. The, he's in the same class as Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. These guys are looking at or have already received extensions, Jalen Hurts as well. Even. And these guys have all gotten extended yeah. or are about to get extended. Right. And to a, it hasn't come up yet. Like, we're not even, like, he's not even talking about extensions right now. Right. So, well, I don't think he's on that level either, but I, I see what you're yeah, saying. And, and I don't think he's a top 10 quarterback. Through though. eight games, he was, absolutely he was. He's right. leading in QBR, right? right? Yeah. At health, when he was healthy, he was legitimately the best quarterback in the league last year before he went down. And that, statistically speaking, I'm not saying I'd take him over 100% of guys, right. but I'm saying, statistically speaking, he was the absolute best early in the year. Right. Then concussions happen. And the thing is, he came back, he wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah, fair. that's fair. That's perfectly fair. I understand. And that. how's he looking? At, how are they saying about how he looks in camp? Looks out. It okay. uh, looks good. The jujitsu stuff working. He's got a new tattoo sleeve that's <laughs> built to ward off demons or something. I, I don't like know that. what it is. Yeah, good good for him. Him. But yeah, he looks good. But I, that's where I think his pressure really is, is he hasn't shown the ability to stay healthy. In just one season, it's not like this guy's been super injury prone. It was a little bit in college and then last season. But if he can't play well when he is healthy, this team is built to win now. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to find somebody that is ready to win mm-hmm. now. So that's okay. why I think to it. Over on the NFC, I'm going to hit Dak Prescott super fast. Cowboys are in trouble. It, they're built. Mm. To, oh, they're always built to win now. But they're like that team could be like generational if Dak figures it out. Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. That's it. But, that's it. He's what's slowing them down when they are slowed down. Right. He's his own worst enemy. He doesn't throw because of crazy defense or anything. He doesn't throw those interceptions. He just throws them. And nobody can figure out why, especially not Dak. Yeah, he is sometimes <laughs> the yips. He is the yips. Yeah. He has the me and Madden. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So Dak's pretty self-explanatory. I don't know why. I don't know why I throw these interceptions. Right. I'll pass it over to you. Um. Yeah, man. So I would go... So Deshaun, Deshaun's on, Deshaun has pressure. Deshaun does have pressure. Um, That's a huge he didn't contract. Deshaun, Deshaun is pressure. Yeah. the money. Yeah. And it's, it's a whole nother year of like, you being comfortable. Like, if you look how you looked the last six games, no. Correct. I don't think he will, but like, no. That's not okay. Yeah. Right? But I do think 
Russ is on some type of pressure as well. Because that's a good pick. Nathan- yeah. that's, Nathan- a, that's, a, that's a good Nathaniel pick. Nathaniel Hackett, like everyone thinks in the can- Nathaniel Hackett sucked. Right. I think that. Sean Payton I can't think he that. sucks it. Sean Payton Russell thinks Russell that. was so hard to watch. And it was hard to watch. It was bad I football. Can't, I can't so I and we had to watch it. And we yeah. had to watch it. Because it was prime time. Prime time. Every week Every for the first, week. like, six weeks. Exactly. Six out so, first eight. We'll be ranting again if it yeah. <laughs> happens again. So I think, oh I think he's on. I think he's on. I think he has pressure. Because also it's new ownership and a new, and a new coach. If he stinks, they could can him. If they really want to can him, they could can him. Right? So I think that's it. I think Aaron Rodgers just because of what they gave up for him, mm-hmm. and I think they brought Nathaniel Hackett over. They brought Lazard, Cobb, Cole Hardman, Billy Turner. Yeah. They brought so many to try to get Dalvin. Like there's so many for Aaron to succeed. So I think he's under pressure. Now NFC, I do have Justin Fields. I, I, can agree. I do have Justin Fields because they have the number one overall pick and didn't draft a quarterback, yeah. and they traded for DJ Moore. Because of the what they believe in, to, in in Justin Fields, and I love Justin Fields. I have a Justin Fields jersey. I love Justin. I think he's gonna kill. I will draft him in all fantasy. I love him. Right? Pause. Right? <laughs> but I do think though that he is un- under pressure to like to be solid. I think the offense developed throughout throughout the year where I think he can be really good. But they have DJ Moore now. They have Khalil Herbert in the back. You know, obviously Mooney and Claypool, so it's like there's no excuses no. for you to like stink it up the joint. Besides, besides the O line being kind of suspect, but like he is under in the NFC. To me, I don't think Dak's gonna lose his job in the NFC. I don't think Desmond. Like I don't think that Falcons actually believe in Desmond Ritter. To be honest, if I'm the Falcons, <laughs> if I'm the Falcons, like I'm like I'm like we'll see how the first six games go, and like we're like going for Caleb Williams, like the race to Caleb Williams, like that's me, you know. So. I think Justin Fields has some pressure on him. And so does all those quarterbacks. I absolutely agree. Trey though, Lance, like, too. Like, all those quarterbacks in the Niners have pressure on them as well. I mean, I, I agree, though, with, with Justin Fields because they really – they could have traded him. You know, they could have absolutely traded him. They, they were faced could with they, that decision. Who's, who's going to trade with Justin Fields? I mean, like, in the off season, like, they, they had the choice between, you know, Justin Bryce Fields. Young, they, said, they said Bryce Young or Justin Fields. Basically, yeah. that's, that's basically where I'm going with this. And they chose Justin Fields. So the Justin pressure Fields. of that alone – if yeah. he doesn't do good this year, he's gonna get shitted on by the media. Yeah. He's gonna get absolutely eaten alive. Yeah. So that that's a lot of pressure alone. So yeah, he will forever like, be uh, weighed not only against his own draft class, which he was yeah. drafted ahead of most of, but also this draft class. Right. So that exactly. that is tough measuring stick that it's always going to be held up 100%. against his head. And Baker too. Baker's under pressure. If he stinks this year, he. Yeah. Colin Coward has said like, if he stinks this year, go to Fox and make seven figures and yeah. talk about college football, <laughs> which. I was like, hmm, that's actually kind of... And I'm a Baker guy, so... I like, like that, right. too, yeah. I, I I love Baker Mayfield, too. Yeah. I love everything he's about, but he's got to play better. And, and you're right, this is the year. And, you know, I, I think there's... This, this list yeah. could go on. This is, this is... I didn't even think about this. Yeah. But there's a lot of hot seat quarterbacks this year. Matt Stafford's on the... Yeah, like... Yeah, there's people that are on their way out just because of know. age. I don't know about hot I think, seat. But. I think Sta- I like like with Stafford. I I feel like at this point he doesn't care if he like doesn't play again. You know what I mean? Like he yeah. Like he he opted he into cared the, this year. Like uh, like he opted into these two years with the Rams. Like yeah, he's I feel just, like if he doesn't play well, he's stunting the growth of the of the like of the Rams. Like but, if they don't is, win that division. Fair. Like I still feel kind of Baker like, should have been there. I think Baker yeah. should have been the quarterback this year for the Rams. I, I think like, he looked good there. At the yeah, end of the play, he looked yeah, comfortable. He looked yeah, he yeah. looked like he was having fun again. He could be decent um, if they had something better than Van Jefferson. So, moving on real quick. So, before we get to Bill's block and then we we conclude this whole thing, we're gonna do some quick hits. So, I got three quick questions, mm. just quick answers. We're not gonna have a huge um, yeah. debate about it. Quick answers. Um, so, who is your sleeper team in the playoffs? If you had to have. One sleeper team. Right yeah, now. I, I, I got, I got, I do got the uh, AFC. I got the Browns. Oh, okay. Um, I got oh. the Browns. I got the Jets. Um, and I sleeper can't... team, the Jets. Yeah. You don't think it's set in stone? Heck no. No. I think, the, I think the Bills okay. and the That's Dolphins fair. are ahead of them. So okay. Right now, I have those and kind of the Titans and kind of and kind of yeah, kind of the Titans, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I mean my my sleeper team for the the playoffs. I'm going the Patriots. I feel like they can squeeze in. Oh, the Pats. I, I like the. Pats I know they'd be. They, they're probably fourth in their division. You know, right now, but I think Wait, they can four squeeze. teams out of that division to make the playoffs is like, wild. Though. So we're right. talking about like this is probably the first complete team that Bill Belichick has had in a while. 
Um, you know, it's, I mean, Tom Brady was there how long ago, but they still didn't even have, like, fully all-around stack teams since, like, you know, like a few years before that as right. well. So I think he's fi- he finally has a team where he's going to get to, you know, mess around, play, play with his options. Yeah. Good wide receiver, in my opinion. I mean, Juju Smith-Schuster, I feel like, is perfect to put, you know, under Bill Belichick. Uh, Mac Jones is going to have some weapons, finally. Um... You know, I, I like this. It. We'll see. Yeah, yeah I, I like it. I, I like it. I think it's something that Bill Belichick can pull out. I don't. Oh. No, I don't know. <laughs> you think they're going to stink. You say complete team, and I think I Mac the, Jones. Uh, yeah, but I mean, Mac Jones, I mean, I don't want to sit here and shit on Mac Jones, but I think like, I do. if he can be healthy and he can play all games this season and they can develop I don't think, rhythm. I don't think it's a bad. I, like, I like Mac Jones. I don't I think like a complete roster. I'm not shitting on Mac Jones. I think they still need... A couple more receivers, a couple more corners, a yeah. safety, some yeah. more defensive. Like I don't think they're a complete team. I think Mac. I think Mac. They got talent everywhere. They I think got talent they have some place. talent. They yeah. have some talent, but like yeah. they have the, one of the pro, like I don't know. I think the Texans have more ta- like more defensive. Talent I love the, the Texans though. I mean, like if it if it wasn't their first year trying to do shit, right? I would probably pick the Texans here. Yeah, because I'm not gonna lie, I really love the culture that they're building. Me and Bill, we had like a whole orgasm almost on one of the episodes talking about the Texans. Not really, it wasn't that you know intense, but. <laughs> All right, pause. But uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, Phil, <laughs> like you and but, Bill uh, podcast having orgasms. Word. Yeah. Bro, the Texans are doing some good shit that I really respect. I just don't know if I could put them in the playoffs yet. No, no it's I mean, tough. It's no, tough. No, no. It, honestly, I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're forced to compete because they traded their pick. So I feel like they're gonna be looking to win every single game that they play this year. Um, but I just don't know if I got them in the playoffs. I yeah. mean, we'll we'll have to see what the situation is like mid season. But it's just not a team I could pick. Yeah. Right and real quick before you go, NFC Panthers and and Bears. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like it. So. I don't think I have any sleepers this year. Hmm. Not one. And here's why. The AFC is absolutely stacked. Mm-hmm. And there are going to be good teams left out. Teams that I don't think can be considered sleepers. And I count the Browns amongst those teams. Mm-hmm. I think the Browns are a very solid team. And mm-hmm. to say you have Deshaun Watson, Nick Chubb, Amari Cooper leading an offense with a, a solid defense, consistency and coaching and everything, they're primed to win now. Like, they have to. They, they don't have draft picks for the next 10 years. And so they're definitely in the right. right. So the Browns are kind of like the what I consider the worst team that I have as a good chance to make it. Mm-hmm. But I can't consider them a sleeper, mm-hmm. right? And, and Steelers, I guess, maybe. But I don't think they're making it either. I, I'm not... Calling a shot at the Steelers. That'd be crazy. I'm just saying that's where my line is. But real quick, who do you have for your division winners and who do you have your your three your three playoff teams? Yeah, so division winners, I honestly I think it's toss up Dolphins or Bills. Okay. I think that's who's gonna be number one, but I think the Jets could also squeak in. I'm not shocked that the Jets missed the playoffs, but I think it very likely will be uh any random order of Dolphins, Bills, Jets all in the playoffs. Okay. Uh, for the AFC West, I obviously have the Chiefs. Okay. I think the Chargers very well should be in. They better be in the playoffs. Or else uh-huh. Staley's done. We'll talk about that another time at least. The Broncos. They're a curious case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Broncos should be with Sean Payton, right? Sean Payton, Russell Wilson. <laughs> right. They should be. <laughs> right, right. So, and then the AFC South is a shit show. Somebody's got to make it though. It doesn't. Right. The, the Jaguars honestly know. should be. Yeah, they're they I was going to say. I would, yeah. So I, would, I mean, so. But yeah, behind the Jaguars, nobody else should be contending. So. I, I, I think Chiefs, Dolphins, um, Ravens, um, Jaguars, right? So I agree on the division winners. Right, the division winners. And I think. Um, but I don't think the Bills. I think it's either or Bills or Jets. I don't think the Bills are solidified. To be in the playoffs, will they probably will be over the Jets? Yeah. yeah, cool. So I'll put them at the five seed. I think the Bengals, depending on Joe Burrow, would be in there, right? Mm-hmm. So now that leaves Denver, Jets, Browns, and either yeah. one of those could be in the seven seed. But I, I can't consider any of them really sleepers. They're all supposed to be good teams. Yeah, right. Well, I would think Denver is a sleeper. Denver, Denver I think I'll Denver's a sleeper. Team. Yeah, but I don't think they're making. It. Denver should be also. Well, I think I, I think, think Sean Payton's going to someone who's not supposed to win your division. Probably. I think is a sleeper. I think the Browns are plus three seventy to win the division. I think it's a sleeper team to make the playoffs. Because yeah. technically, by Vegas odds, we're ranked ninth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ninth, ninth to make the playoffs. That's so, fair. You that, me? That, that counts. That counts. And then over on the NFC, uh, just to flip over there, I've got 
Eagles should absolutely win the NFC East, but Cowboys are consistently good in the regular season at least. So they got, they got a chance there. I like those two to make playoffs for sure. Um, in the West, I, the 49ers should be a runaway, but the Seahawks should be better this year. It, wild card. I, yeah. I think lock for wild card, but no chance at division. And then you got the Packers shouldn't make it at all. The Vikings and the Lions are clear one and two in that division. Right. And then NFC South, somebody's got to make it. So you got three divisions with a clear one and two. And then obviously mm-hmm. somebody's got to win the NFC South. Right. So I don't think that I got a sleeper in the NFC either. Not, I, I, think the, I think the Bears, I think no one really cares. I don't think people care about the Bears. And I think the Panthers aren't going to win the division. I think the Saints will. So I think the Panthers and Bears could do it. But I, I could see that. I'm here for Jerry Goff yeah. winning the division. Not going to lie. Yeah. But, you're um, saying somebody in the NFC South is going to get a – you're saying two teams? Potentially. NFC South I, think Carolina is the, I think Carolina is an underrated roster. I think you're off your rocker if you're telling me two <laughs> NFC South teams got a winning record. I'm just saying that's a sleeper. I'm just saying that's that a is. sleeper. That counts. That's a sleeper. That counts. <laughs> I, I, answering the question. Yeah. Sleeper. I think the Panthers <laughs> – I, I think people are sleeping on the Panthers. And obviously, you know – all right. Yeah. Yeah, that so, was your real quick answer. Yeah. <laughs> yes or no question. <laughs> Moving on. Non QB to win MVP. We always get we always get one player usually every year that it's always in the rumors, maybe in the top five. You know, last year was Justin Jefferson, year before that Cooper Cup. Um, who do you you know, we we remember I this is tough because really what you're looking for to create a situation where a non quarterback could win it is a team with a bad quarterback. <laughs> And that still has to perform well. This has got to be a team that ends up making the playoffs really on the back of one guy. And if anything, I think Cooper Cup, if he stays healthy, he could do it again. I don't think it's likely, but I think it's more likely than anybody Get a load else. of this guy, no. <laughs> as soon as say, no. <laughs> uh, I think I he's know. more likely than anybody else. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm going with Nick Chubb. Um, yeah. I, I think if the Browns... Have like not just a good year or just a year where they scratch into the playoffs. They have a big year, and Nick Chubb is who Nick Chubb is. I think he'll be in the conversation. Um, because I mean I'm not saying you know because I I said earlier that Deshaun Watson's gonna take a little bit more you know of the responsibility off of the back of Nick Chubb, but you know Nick Chubb is just a dog. Right. He's gonna have the stats. He's gonna have. Very good stats. I mean, if no one stopped him and figured him out up to this point, I don't think. Teams are just going to figure out Nick Chubb this year. So he's destined for a big year. And if the Browns can pull it off to where they're like 13 and 4, 12 yeah. and 5, Something I think like he'll be in the conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you on that. I got a pass catcher, a running back, and a defensive player. Um, I actually have Miles Garrett. Okay. Because See, I, I, think, I, I was thinking about it. I just yeah. didn't want to like get looked at as weird if I no, said that. I, I, I have Miles Garrett just because that's the best defensive front we've had since yeah. he's been on. Things that they've been yeah. saying about him in the offseason, yeah. too. Like he's been doing the some. Darius Smith, Donald there. Thompson, yeah. there's dogs over there, Obo, um, dog. Um, I think Jay Jettas. I like Jay Jettas a lot this year as well um, to do it. Oh, my fault. My fault. Not I do like Jay Jettas, but underratedly Garrett Wilson. Okay. I'm big on Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson this year. I think if Gary Wilson stays healthy, he could potentially do it. He could potentially be like have a better season than Devontae Adams. Yeah. So that, think about it? With, yeah. with, with <laughs> So that's what I have. Yeah, Gary Wilson right. or Miles Garrett. Yeah. All right, so now, last but not least, MVP sleeper. MVP sleeper, I got to go with Tua. I, I think just the trajectory he was on last year, they were undefeated through seven or eight games. And, Fair. you know, he led the league in stats. It's if he can do that, obviously, through a full season, there, it's guaranteed. If you go undefeated and lead the league in stats, of course mm-hmm. it's MVP. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but listen, if you're anywhere in that ballpark of what he was on trajectory to do and healthy, you got real good odds right. to win MVP. Man. And I, I think he is in a better position to stay healthy after the, uh, the jiu-jitsu training and and all that. Listen, I find a way to do it every episode. I'm finding a way to do it now. It's shout out to Jared motherfucking Goff. That's my MVP sleeper, man. I mean, I enjoyed that Lions season so much last year. It's probably like the one team that didn't make the playoffs in the history of NFL that I absolutely just enjoyed almost the entire way through. Because even, even when they were 0-6, they were still pretty good. You know, will they turn it around? And then they 
They did. They it literally came down to the last week, right. um, and some bullshit. Um, but the Seahawks winning. Yeah, everything just uh, it was it was sad because I was pretty sure the Seahawks were gonna <laughs> fucking lose that game. But, yeah, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got Jared Goff. I mean, that team's gonna be great this year. I think if they're able to pull the division out from the Vikings and the Lions are actually, you know, like top two, three, and right. that I think he's got to be the MVP favorite if he throws, you know, four thousand you know, yards and how many ever touchdowns. The offense is going to be great. Yeah. So he, he has the making of a huge year. He does. Yeah. Could happen. And you know what? Shout out to Jared Goff. I'm going to get the jersey this year. I'm getting the jersey. You I'm should. The Lions jersey will be fine. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to yeah. go for it. That's the next yeah, jersey. Yeah, right. I was going to go with Jalen Waddle, but I, I think I got to go right. Jared Goff. Um, I don't think Jalen Hurts is a sleeper, so I'm not going to go there. But I agree. because of his... Because of how weak that division is, I do like Trevor Lawrence a lot this year. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's good. Gonna, and it's, yeah. And it, he, I say yeah, but also Trevor he's in, he's yeah, in good. Yeah. He's in, he always plays in good weather over there in Florida. Um, I really like what he, I really like what he's gonna do with Calvin Ridley. Yeah, yeah they got um, a solid team. He now has a whole shit ton of experience because right. he experienced lows of lows in that playoffs. Exactly. That, some really big highs. Yeah, that I receiving core stack. I like and, it. And I, I, yeah, he's, like, like, he's gonna be different this year. He's gonna be different. The, he rec- grew. the he record's grew. gonna record's gonna be inflated. Like they could be one or two seed if they re- if they're locked in. They yeah. could be the one or two seed in the AFC because of that division. Um, also, I don't know if Drew Brees ever won MVP, but I know he would like had the most he yards. Has won. Um, he has one I, I was gonna guess maybe one, um, if, um, if Sean Payton, if Sean Payton could get Russ to that level, I think I agree Ru- with that. Fuck Drew Brees. I think Russ. I Drew Brees has a Super Bowl MVP. Super Bowl no regular, regular, that's, regular that's MVP. One, I think probably. he's. I think he's leading the league in passing though, multiple multiple years. Um, I think. Uh, I never liked Drew Brees. I think Russ. I think Russ is an honorable mention for MVP. I like it because if he turns it around, and obviously, the, obviously Deshaun Watson too yeah. as well. I mean, I don't think the league would ever give Deshaun Watson that, that award. <laughs> now imagine he's hands down the best player. Imagine like, 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 all right, we gotta find another kid. Yeah. <laughs> they make up some Sam Howell. <laughs> they, they make up some crazy stat for somebody yeah. to win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but that is the best roster Deshaun's ever played with, and yeah. um, I think there's an argument to it. But yeah, I'm, I'm with, I think I think T Law has the best case for it this year. I like it. I like it. And real quick, just to wrap up the Drew Brees thing, which I didn't think to be talking about Drew Brees today. Right. Uh, but Drew Brees led the league in passing yards seven times and didn't win an MVP. Yeah. Good. That's fishy. That is fishy. Good. That's fishy. I like that. So, Good job, that, that, that that might be... thing, Russ, <laughs> But Russ, I think Sean Payton could get Russ into that Drew Brees energy, and I think yeah. Russ could even add more with Rush it was his rushing ability. So I think Russ is low key up there as well. But if he is, then that means Denver probably play off team. So. so the perfect way I feel like we should end the show is with Bill's block. Let's talk some fantasy. Sounds good. So yeah. we may have a very special edition fantasy football episode coming your way before long. So I'm not going to dive too deep into the trenches here. Just want to talk overall best ball strategy. So I'm really the only best ball guy in the room. So uh, this will be more me talking. Uh, but the fantasy football special edition might be Dom and I are really showing, giving you the full tour of the ins and outs of yeah. a, a full squad. <laughs> so uh, really want to talk roster management quick and how you get the best bang for your buck. Uh, you want to start off wide receiver because wide receivers typically stay healthier than running backs. So the past three years winning best ball lineups have all started with a wide receiver as the number one pick. Another thing they have in common, they have two quarterbacks, two tight ends. I had always liked to go with three and three. Uh, just really spread love. Make sure you're covering bye weeks, covering for injury. But if you're in one of these tournament-style lineups uh, where there's more than just the 12-man prize, uh, then you're really looking to get more running backs, more wide receivers. I like the sweet spot of three and three on 12-man leagues. But if you're going tournament, make sure it's two and two. For running backs... Again, in the tournament style, big tournament style, grab yourself six running backs. In the big tournaments, grab yourselves nine wide receivers. That makes up your 18-man team. Couple sleepers. I just want to grab a couple sleeper picks. First off, something Dom said right now is Calvin Ridley with Trevor Lawrence leads to a Trevor Lawrence MVP level season. I love Calvin Ridley. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking him as high as I need to to make sure he's locked in. It's typically early third round for me, I, if, if possible. 
Uh, but if I have to take him my second round, if I start running back and there isn't, it's getting anywhere close where I might not get him, I'm perfectly fine with Calvin Ridley being my wide receiver one. Right. Guy I like super late, Isaiah Hodgins of the Giants. Okay. Isaiah Hodgins led his team in points hmm. last, in the later, later half of last year. He Fair. looked like a stud, and there's nobody really standing out on the Giants. Those that kind of did are all hurt right now. They got like four receivers either actually hurt or at least banged up. Isaiah Hodgins is the healthiest and the best that they got, so that's somebody you can fill your roster with late. Uh, we'll dive into a whole lot more in special edition coming out pretty soon, uh, but yeah. that'll wrap up Bill's block for today. I like that. I like Hell that. yeah. So quick uh, to conclude, give me a team real quick, quarterback, running back, two wide receivers, and one tight end. Give me what you got. No Hall of Fame players, no players right now there that could make the Hall of Fame. Who do you got? So this is tough because could make the Hall of Fame. Who, who the hell knows, right? Right. Yeah. You don't know who's getting the gold jackets now. Uh, but starting quarterback, I got Matt Stafford. I don't project him to make the Hall of Fame, but he very well could. Uh, running back, I don't know why Sean Alexander's not in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Sean Alexander is <laughs> one of the best running backs of at least my era of watching football. Uh, set a record, not that it was held for super long, but set the record for NFL rushing touchdowns. Uh, wide receivers, I got a little bit of thunder and a little bit of lightning here. I've got Heinz Ward and Steve Smith. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you got you got your typical X, your typical Y. I I, I really like the way Matt Stafford stretched field. Those two, uh, I really I can't think of two better receivers that aren't in the NFL Hall of Fame right now. Tight end, uh, this is where it gets a little choppy. He could end up in the Hall of Fame. I don't think he will just because really most of his production was just in a few years here. But I like George Kittle. He's a good, complete, all-around tight end, good blocking, good, great receiving. And I don't think he gets there just because of uh, his seasons that weren't healthy. He'll get there. <laughs> he, he's a he's a, he's, yeah. a, he's a first team. He's a first teamer. No, he's a first teamer two or three times. I think he's made first all pro teams like two or three times. Pro bowler. Yeah. yeah. He has records of like, yeah, I think he'll get, he's going to get there. I, I wouldn't be shocked, so that's the thing. I, as a backup, I'll go Darren Waller there just in case. Okay, Darren it. Waller, I think, has a little bit more shade on his career based on past issues off the field. Got it. Um, got a little bit later start and, you know, hasn't been, like, the absolute pinnacle of consistency. So he's my backup. Would love to have George Kittle. We're not really doing backups Aaron here. Aaron Hernandez as your third? Yeah, that, that's <laughs> the guy that I know is not going to Hall of Fame. So just to be locked in. <laughs> like having some something a little bit more surefire. Fair enough. Outlaw team, if this guy gets a gold jacket to all of a sudden be without a tight end. So, right. yeah, we can throw Aaron Hernandez there if necessary. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> to I'm gonna get a little crazy. I'm going to have the most unorthodox team I don't think anyone's going to be able to guard this team. So I'm going Colin Kaepernick at the quarterback. I really love uh, Colin Kaepernick. I don't think anybody has to guard this team then. Because oh, wow. Kaepernick's quarterback. Listen, Kaepernick was pretty fucking good, all right? And I, then I, he was pretty bad, too. But we're talking about when he was really good, all right? Oh, okay. We're talking about okay, that one so, season. Yeah. Okay. The, it was generational, man. It was generational. So I'm, ta- I'm taking Colin Cap. Um, I'm going Jamal Charles at running back. That's my favorite running back of all time. I just loved watching him play. It's fun to watch. Um, the two wide receivers I'm going, Plaxico Burris and Deshaun Jackson. Okay. Pretty fucking weird. Okay. But we're yeah. going to go with it. And then at tight end, I got Mr. Reliable, Zach Ertz. Yeah. He might be a, he might be a Hall of Famer, but I feel you. Zach Ertz? It's possible. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. He was a, he's, a Super Bowl, he's a Super Bowl winner on the Eagles. Yeah. We'll see. He's Tough set. Yeah. Tough set. Um, I think it's too debatable right now. Yeah, but we'll see. I feel you. Well, we'll see when the time. Comes. So, are we doing it by like by by entirety of the season, or like can I by one season? Do whatever. Like the you, the you, best of their season. I mean, he's you can picking, do he's whatever picking, you want because like <laughs> because I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do RG three as my okay. QB oh. as my it just goes off one season. I had him as my commentator. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's a he, he was Damn, he was special. He was special, but he's gonna be a Hall of Fame. I don't think RG three is gonna be. A you think Cam Newton's gonna be home? Yeah, MVP. that's a MVP. that's a good question. MVP, but I think, he won the yeah. I think you have to, yeah, if you yeah. if you win MVP. Um, running back, um, oh yeah, Matt Forte. Okay, Matt Forte. I don't think he's a pro. I don't think he's a, a Hall of Famer. I don't think he's gonna be a Hall of Famer, but he was really good. Um, or Arian Foster, either or. Um, and then for wideouts, um, he's a Hall of Famer. Um, I think 
I, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with wide receivers right now that I think that are going to be really well, really, really like really good, but not Hall of Famers. Um, I don't think Amari Coop's gonna be a Hall of Famer, but That's I'm right. gonna have Coop. I'm gonna have Coop there, um, and I'm gonna have. Uh, I want to say I want to say uh, Sam Andrews. It's okay. This one's tough. I know my tight end. My tight end is Jeremy Shockey. Okay. Jeremy okay. Shockey. <laughs> I know my tight end. Fuck it's it. Jeremy, Jeremy, definitely Jeremy Shockey. Yeah, uh, oh, my fault. My fault. My receiver. Chad Ochocinco. Chad Ochocinco. I Cinco. love Chad Ochocinco. Yeah, Chad Ochocinco is my, yeah. So I, that's, that's my I want him on my team just in case my team gets picked for hard knocks. Yeah, so right. I might exactly. squeeze him in there too. That's fair. Exactly. On sheer entertainment. Yeah. I also thought about uh, he who shall not be mentioned based on our last episode, Antonio Brown. Uh, yeah, that's I think as well. He's such a train wreck that even though he should be in the Hall of Fame based on numbers, right? Good I'll luck take giving this guy it. a podium. Oh, Antonio uh, Brown and Plaxico Burris, like it's about to get real dangerous up in here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? good luck. Good luck. <laughs> also, Mark Andrews too is honorable for honorable mention. I think before. he's he, on, he probably will be a Pro Bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, we'll Hall see. of Fame or yeah. we'll Just see. based on the tight ends of today, I think he's amongst the best, yeah. and he's been that for yeah. a few years now. Um, so yeah, I mean that that's it. Damn, we had, that episode awesome. was easy. easy. Yeah, that that, that was it. That fast. So you know, thank you for watching. That was another episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, sell your soul. You know, do whatever you got to do to get in tune. Um, we're out. That's it. Uh, that's a, we're back in the studio. We're gonna give you some more fire content. We have so much more content coming. We're locked in. We hope you guys are too. Have a good night. More day or whatever the fuck you want to have. Let's Not do it. Just <laughs>